Hi, I'm Garrett with IDC Woodcraft and I'd like to welcome you to this video, especially if you're somebody who's going to be getting the long mill 30 by 30 CNC router. I get a lot of questions in email or in the YouTube comments about my table build. People are wondering what are the dimensions, what do they need, what are some of the accessory equipment that they need to get. So this video is intended to cover you, the person who's going to be getting a long mill 30 by 30 so you, you know what you need to have ready when you get your machine. So let's just kind of dive right in and by the time you're done you'll have a good basic understanding of what you need when you get your long mill. Well let's start off with the bird's eye view of the long mill if I can get it into my camera space which I can't get the entire setup in at one shot without walking all the way across my shop because I've got this vacuum tube tower set up there but right here with what you see is the core of my long mill setup. I've got my desk right next to it where I edit videos and I will do design work and have one-on-ones on, with people if they want to be helped with the design work or the CNC router. If you're interested in one-on-ones, you can always schedule those links down below for that stuff. In fact, everything I talk about, I will make links down below so you can get it. All right, so let's talk about the dimensions of this machine and then we'll get into the dimensions of the table that I have and I'll just tell you what the minimum recommendations are and then some of the other stuff that you're going to need or you would want to get for your machine. All right, so first of all, let's talk about the machine footprint. So the depth of the machine from the end of this foot to the very end of the motor in the back is 44 inches. The width from the outside of this foot to the outside of that foot is also 44 inches. So that is your minimum table size that you'll need to mount your long mill down. The height of it will be a little more than 16 inches when everything is raised up in your z-axis. Now if you're going to do an enclosure you want to take that into account for your your vacuum dust hose that you're going to have attached to it. And we'll talk about that in just a little bit. As far as the, the left side there is the x-axis motor here and the bracket there and the drag chain so that adds a couple of inches to this footprint here as far as the width goes not for mounting but for any like accessory you might have such as uh, an enclosure that you build or something like that so what I would just say is the absolute minimum table size that you want is 48 inches by 48 inches that'll give you a little bit of playroom with the thing the height that you want to make your table I found the optimal is 31 to 32 inch is from the very top of the table to the floor and the reason is is because it's a pretty deep machine and so uh, it, it, it's a good height to look down on just like this but if you want to reach back here which you will because you got a big machine to make big projects it can get a little hard to lean over here if your machine is higher than 31 to 32 inches. One of the things that's going to come with your machines is the control box and the power switch. So those need to be mounted somewhere with the machine. I've had people ask me can they just mount those on the side. Absolutely. You can mount it on the side, you can mount it underneath, and I've even seen pictures of people doing that. I personally like to have the control box on top close to me with the stop power button there. And the reason is is because it has these three buttons on the control box. The first one says play, the second one says pause, and the third one says stop. So these are like emergency buttons I can use. So if I'm watching my project run and, and I need to pause it temporarily, it's the button's right here. All I have to do is press it, the router will stop cutting, but it'll be ready to continue going and I just need to do whatever I need to do. And then I just hit the play button and it resumes. Now if something goes wrong, I've got this stop button right there. And I can hit that and the machine will shut down. And of course we have the power button. You want to just keep in mind about the cabling too that you're going to have to be somewhere like right down in here to get that machine like it'll have to pass through the table or around the table but you just want to keep your cabling in good shape anyway so my table is 48 deep by 58 wide by 30 
one and a half tall. The construction of my table is an MDF top. And basically I just took the, I built the frame and then I took the MDF, I secured it and then I trimmed off the, the remaining material and I used it to square up the machine and build the spoil board. And if you want to know about that, there's a link down below for that video. And by the way, I made this spoil board as most of us do. And I have made this available to you in G code and all the, the files, the design files, you can have them. Uh, you can get them off of Etsy. So links down below for that. All right, let's get into the table construction here. It's all two by four construction. And you can see that I have several pieces going across the bottom of the table. And that gives the table all the strength, supports the, the table top itself. And then the legs themselves are also 2x4s. Now what I did with the legs was I took a couple 2x4s and I ripped them in half. So I've got a, a, a two by four here, so two by four that way, and then the half piece is screwed up to here. So we have kind of that V shape, like you see right there. And that adds strength to the table. And then from there, I trussed everything like that, and right there, and I did it back there. All four corners are trussed. And that has made this table very stable. So it's actually quite hard to actually shake the table. <laughs> right now, it's, I'm trying to shake it, but the table's not shaking, I'm shaking. So we have 48 deep by 58 wide by 31 and a half tall. I really mean it, don't go over 31 and a half. It just gets hard to get to it. I've been asked, can this thing be tilted like that? I'm actually thinking of tilting this machine at least at a, a certain angle because it'll make it easier to video projects for you. So that's that. Here's a little tip I want to give you. I've made this so I have the wrenches for my bit change outs. Very handy to me. So just remember that. So let's talk about how I've got my monitors set up and my, my dust collection. Let's just talk about the dust collection real quick since I'm in the front because I'm going to have to go around to the back. All right, so as you can see, I have actually made a certain dust boot here and I've done this for a reason so I can shoot videos. The router has a down blast and that will blow stuff all over the place and that gets everything dusty and that's why we have a dust boot. I built this to stop the down blast and actually redirect it up these flutes. And I still have the vacuum capability. I'll put a little piece of uh, painter's tape around the back and that just kind of keeps the air, allows it to come over here and pick up a lot of the dust. When you get your long mill, I will say get the dust boot. This thing works awesome. It's magnetic, it fits right over it. And then you take, take this tube and just drop it right on top and it works it works awesome the other thing I just want to point out are the limit switches long mill has finally added these to the machine so now they have a homing sequence which is if you have if you have a long mill get the homing switches so there's one right here they are actually not switches but they're sensors and they're inductive sensors that will sense the, the metal coming close to it very accurate and they last much longer than hard switches, like uh, clicking switches. There's one for the X, there's one for the Z, and one for the Y. So I strongly suggest you get that. The advantage to that is because you always have a very specific reference point that you can use to do all of your work. It, it, I'll shoot another video about that another time, but I just get, just get those switches. Let's talk about the laptop and the monitor. I do recommend that you have a dedicated laptop that will run your CNC router. And the reason is because you can do all your design work in some other comfortable place in your home and you'll just have this one laptop that will just be here all the time. The good thing is, is 
it doesn't take a lot of power in a laptop. You can use an old laptop, a very cheap laptop. I actually have a couple laptop choices that I found on Amazon. Uh, the links are down below for that. The thing you want in a laptop is three, at least three USB ports. So real cheap laptops will work amazingly well to run your CNC router. Again, links are down below. And same thing with monitors. Just uh, get, a, get a small and expensive monitor. I got a link down there for, for one. This is, I think it's a 24 inch monitor. They're cheap too, like that's a 32 inch, and I got that for 180 bucks. So uh, I'll have a link for one that size. So let me show you how that's all set up. So I'll walk around the back. So you can see I just, for the monitor, I've made a little platform. This is still same the same MDF that came off of the tabletop. And I just created like a little whatever you want to call it there and then it goes and it bolts right into the the table itself and same with the monitor I did the exact same thing I did have to do a little spacing there just because I had a little step step on the MDF and it just comes up like that now one of the things I did was just turn that table relative to the machine like that just because I'm standing there it's right there it's easier just to turn a little bit and look at it and same with the monitor and the monitor is just held down with a little piece of 2x4 and I got a couple of screws holding each side so let's talk about this guy I will say you want the 20 foot tubing this is two and a half inch I found that 10 foot just wouldn't get all the way around so I've just built this guy kind of sort of pieced it together I zip tied the tube to it and it's just screwed to the side of the table same way as everything else so that's that's my setup and that's my setup from the back now one thing I'll just say you see this little line here I actually cut a slot in the table to run the wire for this motor over to that side that was overkill. All I need to do is drill a hole in the table, run it across, and come back out on this side. One other thing I get questions on, some people want all their control stuff on the other side of the machine. They ask me if that can be done. So I'm going to go around the other side and talk to you about that. So can you switch this? Well, yes you can. It's going to take a little bit of thought on your part. <laughs> uh, you'll have to put this leg on the other side because it's got a little clip on it this bracket is designed for this side so you'll be actually reversing that bracket uh, I don't really see why you couldn't put it, the control box and all the wire outlets to the other side you're just going to have to figure that out uh, one of the other things I like to do is keep all my stuff close at hand so this is all my CNC router stuff well, there's more than just that. And I have my router bits up there. So everything's handy. The only thing I haven't done was uh, set up something for my touch probe. Uh, when you get your long mill, along with the other things you're going to get, the, 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 limit, the limit sensors, uh, get the touch plate. You will be so grateful that you did. All right, so that's my setup just rehash 48 deep by 48 wide is your absolute minimum mine is 48 deep by 58 wide by 31 and a half tall I have a dedicated laptop with my machine and I've got a dedicated monitor that's tied into the laptop so I can see that screen much better I actually like to see the control screen this is something that's actually really nice because you are sometimes sitting right in front of your machine trying to get it to move and having to reach over to here to look at that can actually be you're, you're just kind of up here turning like that so it, it's kind of a pain so I probably will take this monitor and actually put it right over the machine we'll see the size of the table that you need for a minimum for your long mill 30 by 30 is 48 deep by 48 wide by 31 to 32 inches tall. I recommend the 58 inches wide. For everything I've talked about, the inductive sensors, which you definitely want to get, and the touch probe, the dust boot, uh, the, 
the dedicated laptop and, and a small monitor, so the tubing, all that good stuff. The links for all that stuff is down below. So if you're needing to get some of that, then at least you've got the links available to you. If this video is helpful to you, gave you an idea how you need to get set up, give me a thumbs up and maybe a comment down below. If you're brand new to CNC routers, then subscribe to the channel because I teach about CNC routers for the beginners and all the design work with the Vectric software.